In this video, we're going to be looking at finding parametric equations for a curve. So previously, we've been focused on being given a set of parametric equations and then making a sketch of our parametric curve and eliminating the parameter to obtain our equation in x and y. Um, here we're going to focus on being given a um, curve. Usually, we'll be given something that's in terms of x and y or we'll be given some information about a graph that we'd like to create. And we'll need to set up some parametric equations um, for that graph. So let's look at a little bit of information um, to help us with some special kinds of curves, and then we'll start looking at some examples. So first here we have um, some information about a nice set of parametric equations that will always give us um, the graph of a circle. So the parametric equations x equals x naught plus a cosine bt, y equals y naught plus a sine bt. Um, describe all our part of the circle um, whose equation is x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared equals a squared where it's centered at x naught y naught with this radius a and if b is greater than zero this set of parametric equations here will generate our circle in the um, counterclockwise direction. So let's look at a little bit of um, how these parametric equations connect to this um, equation in terms of x and y of the circle. So notice that I can write x minus x naught over a is equal to cosine of bt and y minus y naught over a is equal to sine of bt. Okay. Remember we've got our Pythagorean theorem that tells us that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So I can say that cosine squared of bt plus sine squared of bt would be equal to 1 because I have the same angle in each of those. And since cosine of bt is this x minus x naught over a, I can say x minus x naught over a squared plus y minus y naught over a squared is equal to 1. So notice that this is going to give me x minus x naught squared over a squared plus y minus y naught squared over a squared equals 1. And then we could multiply both sides by a squared, which would cancel these here, giving me a squared over here on the right. So we can see there how that set of parametric equations does describe um, our usual equation of a circle. So this is a useful um, fact to remember. Okay, both for us to create parametric equations for a circle and if you see something like this set of uh, parametric equations appear um, to know it's going to be some sort of portion of a circle. So notice this is saying if x has this cosine component, y has the sine component, it's going to end up being traced out counterclockwise. I'll also note here that if x is equal to x naught plus a sine of bt, and y equals y naught plus a times cosine of bt, again with, with b greater than 0, this will trace out the circle clockwise. Okay, so if you're trying to generate some parametric equations and trace it out clockwise, you might want to use a setup that looks like that. Um, when we're talking about the uh, interval over which the circle is traced out once, it would be traced out once on the interval here where I would have t between 0 and 2 pi over the absolute value of b. Okay, so that b um, is going to affect what size my interval is to in order to trace out my curve just once. All right, let's look at our um, some general equations here when we're talking about parametric equations for a line and then we'll, we'll start getting into some um, examples. Okay, so here we're told that the equations x equals x naught plus a t and y equals y naught plus b t where t is between negative infinity and infinity. Um, we'll describe a line with slope b over a passing through the point x naught y naught. Um, if a is 0 and b is not 0, we would have a vertical line in that case. So let's just see how this set of parametric equations here um, corresponds to what we know to be the equation of a line in terms of x and y. So notice that x minus x naught over a, I could solve that for being equal to t, and then plug in t here for y, doing my little eliminate the parameter step. So I'd have y is equal to y naught plus b times x minus x naught over a. So you can see that I can rewrite this as y minus y naught equals b over a times x minus x naught. Okay, so that does um, 
agree with what we know to be the equation of a line in terms of x and y. So we get this nice formulation here for parametric equations of a line. Um, one thing that um, you want to keep in mind is in general if I'm, I'm asked to draw or to determine parametric equations for a certain circle or a line or some kind of curve, um, there are many, many ways that I could um, create parametric equations that would generate the same graph. Um, but there will be cases where you'll have some additional information about exactly how that graph is being traced out, and that will require a more particular um, parametric equation to not only generate the graph, but generate it at a certain speed and in the right direction. So let's look at some examples where we have um, some parameters that we need to satisfy. So in this example, we're asked to find parametric equations for a circle centered at 2, 3 with radius 1, and we want to generate it counterclockwise. So we're looking at a circle, we have a certain center and radius, and we're generating it clockwise. So we can make use of that um, form that we were given before, where x was equal to um, our x naught plus a cosine of bt. Here I'm not told the speed, so we'll just take b to be 1. So I'll have um, x is x naught plus a cosine t, and y is going to be y naught plus a sine t, where a was the radius here, so I'm going to have radius 1. I also have the center of 2, 3. Remember that x naught comma y naught was my center in that um, formula. So I'm going to use x is equal to 2 plus cosine t, and y is equal to 3 plus sine t. Um, so to finish answering this question, I'm going to need to say what the interval of t needs to be to generate that circle exactly once. And then I'll want to just confirm this by making a table, just to check my work, make sure that this does in fact generate what I want. So making the table can also be helpful if you've forgotten um, in what direction having cosine here or sine here generates the, um, the circle. So we're going to um, always be able to just make a table and, and plot a couple points and make sure it's all in the direction that we want. So I'm going to plug in some um, nice easy values here for t. So we'll do 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. So let's see what that gives us. This is also going to help us in answering part b of this question. So um, at t equals 0, it looks like I have the point 3, 3. At pi over 2, we've got the point 2, 4. At pi, we have 1, um, 3. And at 3 pi over 2, we've got the point 2, 2. Okay, so let's just plot what this looks like. So I'm going to have um, 1, 2, 3 here, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it looks like at the point um, 3, 3, I'm right here. Oops, we got 3, 3. Then I've got 2, 4 at pi over 2. I'm going to have the point 1, 3 at pi, and then at 2, 2, or at 3 pi over 2, I'm at um, that 2, 2 point. Oops. Okay. So I started over here at 3, 3, so it went this way. Oops, and back around. So I've got my arrows on here indicating my direction, and it is um, counterclockwise here. Okay. Started here at t equals 0. Went around, generated it in the right direction over that interval from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so let's look at part B. Part B now says to find parametric equations for just the lower half of the circle. So we're going to want just the part here. Okay, so we're going to have to think about what t values I want. It does say still counterclockwise. So I'm still going to have x is 2 plus cosine t, y is 3 plus sine t here. But I want to adjust the lower half. So let's see, this was t equals 0, this was t equals pi over 2 that I got to at the top. Over here, I started my, um, my lower half here at t equals pi, and then this bottom point here was t equals 3 pi over 2, and then I was going to be back to pi over 2. So it looks like I just need t between pi and 2 pi in order to get the lower half of the circle. Okay. So let's look at one example here where we're going to apply those um, equations for, or parametric equations for a line. So here I want to find parametric equations for a line segment that starts at negative 1, um, negative 3, and ends at 6, comma 6, negative 16. So remember our parametric equations for the line were x equals x naught plus a t and y equals y naught plus bt, okay, where that 
was a line with slope oops, b over a. Okay. Now these are not the only possible parametric equations for a line segment. This is just um, one nice way that you could set up parametric equations for a line segment. So let me just plot this point. So I've got negative 1, negative 3. Actually, let me oops, make this um, up here a little bit because I'm mostly in the lower quadrant. So I've got negative 1, um, 1, 2, 3 is about here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, negative 16. This is not going to be to scale. That's way down here. So I have something like this where this is my point P and this is my point Q and it's going in that direction. Um, in the parametric equation, this x naught y naught here represents like my first point here, and I'm also going to need to figure out what I need to plug in for my b and my a. So let's go ahead and find the slope between um, those two different points. So I would have um, negative 16 minus negative 3 all over 6 minus negative 1. So this is negative 13 over 7. So the question is, do I want to let a be negative 6, excuse me, negative 13? Um, excuse me. I have negative 13 over 7. Do I, am I going to make the 13 or the 7 negative when I'm determining what b and a are? Well, looking at our um, line segment here, I can see that the, the x values actually are increasing, but the y values decrease. Okay, so if this is equal to my my b over a, we're going to let um, b be equal to negative 13. Okay, that's the rise. We're showing that, that we have a decreased rise. And a is equal to 7. So I can use x is equal to um, negative 1 plus 7t. And y is equal to um, my negative 3 plus negative 13t there. Okay, so the last thing to do is just to put an interval for t on here. Now, I can see that when t is 0, let me make this instead of plus a negative. Oops, I want to make this just minus 13, just to make it look a little bit more clear there. Okay, that's minus 13. I can see if I plug in 0 for t, I do get the point p, so this corresponds to t equals 0. So what t value corresponds to my um, point q there? So I can let 6, my x point at q, be equal to negative 1 plus 7t. And if I solve that for t, I see t is going to equal 1. Just to make sure that I didn't make an error, I can also take y here and plug in negative 16. I see I'm going to get negative 13 equals negative 13t. So again, I get t equals 1. Okay. So this would be my um, setup for my parametric equations here, where I can have um, the interval here be from t, uh, t equals 0 to t equals 1, so I start at t equals 0 at point P, and then using these parametric equations at t equals 1, I will be at point Q. Okay. So let's just look at one more example of finding some parametric equations, and then we'll look at one application. So here, um, I'm interested now in finding parametric equations for um, first a complete parabola and then a segment of the parabola. Now. We weren't given any particular nice form to use for um, finding parametric equations of a parabola. There are several different things that we could use, but here I just want to um, point out that you can, if you're not given any um, specifications about how um, the curve is going to be traced out, an easy way to just create a parameterization is to let x be equal to t and then y be equal to um, what you have here in terms of x, where x is replaced with t. So I can say y is equal to 2t squared minus 4. That's a perfectly fine way to parameterize something if you didn't have any um, other information that you were trying to um, capture with your parameterization. So that would give the, um, the complete parabola. I don't have any restrictions on t, so this is saying t is all, all possible values, meaning um, everything between negative infinity and infinity here. Okay, that's going to give me my whole whole parabola. Now, if I want just the segment of this parabola where x has this restriction, if I use this same thing with x equals t, y equals 2t squared minus 4, here I can just use this as my restriction here where I have t um, substituted for x. So now that's saying I just want a particular portion of my parabola. So that's, that's one other thing that you might see when we're, when we're coming up with some parametric equations.
Okay, so let's finish with looking at an example here. This is going to be circular motion again. Um, we're going to try to come up with a set of parametric equations that has the right kind of properties. So here we're told that we have the tip of a 15 inch second hand of a clock that's com completing one revolution, so tracing out a circle once um, in a 60 second time frame. We want to find parametric equations that describe the circular path of the tip of the second hand. Um, and we can um, assume that our, our point x, y is going to denote our position, in this case the position from the tip of this hand, to the center of the um, origin. So let's get a, a picture here. So I'm going to have a circle, the tip of my second hand here. I can think about tracing out this circle. And that second hand is 15 inches long, so that's going to be the radius of my circle. So I'm going to have a circle here with center 0, 0 and radius 15 inches. Okay. I'm also being told here that this is traced out, well I guess it, we're not told, but because it's a clock, okay, we can say it's being traced out clockwise and not counterclockwise. So we want to be tracing this out clockwise, since that's how the actual second hand would be traveling around the clock. So if you remember our general forms here that we had for a set of parametric equations that used our sine and cosine, if we let sine be part of the x component here, um, that's going to give us that clockwise direction versus having uh, cosine be part of the x component. And my radius is 15, so I'm going to let x be equal to 15 sine of bt and y equals 15 cosine of bt. So I need to figure out what that b needs to be. So that's going to be kind of the extra tricky part of this particular problem. So notice that I'm going to have some angle in there in my sine and cosine where theta is equal to bt. Okay, I want um, theta to be 0 when t equals 0. Okay. Um, so at initial time, my, my angle is going to be 0. And then when theta is 2 pi, when I've made um, my, my complete revolution here, um, that's going to happen after t equals 60 seconds. So I can solve for b using this, this information here. So I can say 2 pi has to be equal to b times 60, which means b must be equal to 2 pi over 60 where b is equal to pi over 30, okay? So if I let x equal 15 sine of pi over 30t and y equals 15 cosine of pi over 30t, where t is between 0 and 60 seconds, this is going to trace out my circular path um, just once over, over that 60 second time frame um, in the clockwise direction. So now let's look at a graph illustrating this example. So here we have the equation that we found. We have um, our parametric equation with x is 15 sine of pi over 30t, y is 15 cosine of pi over 30t. I've got a point here at um, t equals 0. We're starting at the top of our clock. And let's just look at how it's tracing this out. See, it's going in that clockwise direction. And it, get ba it gets back to the top, back to 12 o'clock after 60 seconds. So I'll just play that one more time so you can see how this is being traced out. So this just confirms that this does um, illustrate the application that we were interested in with the tip of our 15-inch um, um, second hand going around just once in 60 seconds.